Um, hello, everyone. Um, if you came to my class two weeks ago, it's still me. I'm Mallory. Um, I had Devin sub last week. Um, glad it was a good class. Um, I am a personal trainer and a group fitness instructor, and I also um, that was my boyfriend's hand. Um, I still, uh, I manage the whole group fitness program. So I oversee the schedule and the instructors and hiring and onboarding. So if you ever have any feedback for me on the program, would love to hear that as well. Um, for this class, it's really take everything at your own level. I try to give as many modifications as possible. So feel free to take any of them. If there's an exercise you just don't like or don't wanna do, don't do it, pick your own. Um, this class is really should be accessible for everyone. Um, I'm not going to play music today because uh, we post these on YouTube. We have our own YouTube channel. Not sure if you know that, but we've been having some copyright music issues. So um, you can feel free to play music on your end if you want, because you'll be muted. Um, but if you, uh, I will not play, be playing music from my end. Um, other than that, um, I know virtual is a little bit weird, so if you have any questions at the end about um, any exercises or thoughts or anything that felt weird, I'll stay after for a couple minutes and answer any questions you have, or if you have any questions about the world, I don't know, whatever, um, feel free to ask me those. So today, um, our theme is going to be our obliques, which um, is a very under-talked about muscle, so it's, it's a connector between your core, um, as well as your lower back and your glutes. So um, obliques do three main things. So the first is lateral flexion. So if you think about like moving side to side as if you're doing an oblique dip, that's lateral flexion. Um, rotation, so what you would think of, of rotation side to side and flexion moving forward and back. So flexing in the obliques. Um, the main movement of obliques though is anti-rotation. So your obliques are these muscles. If you put your hands on your hips and then a little bit above, that's where your obliques are. And they're, I'm trying to describe them. They're kind of like fingers and they curve from your glutes up over the top of your hips and connect to your core. Um, and their main purpose is to control the movement of the lumbar spine, which is the spine that connects to your lower back and then down into your sacrum. And so um, the obliques help control. Um, they're really a stability muscle, not a mobility. Um, ooh, playlist recommendations. Let's see. I really like the workout playlist on um, Spotify. That would probably be my recommendation. I, I'm not great with music, so really whatever you're feeling. Um, so yeah, uh, their main purpose is stability, not mobility. Um, so you don't really want mobile obliques. That should never be really your goal. You really want to work on them being stable. Um, so today we're really going to focus on stabilizing the obliques, which will then by proxy help stabilize your glutes and your core. Um, so a lot of fun stuff to work on today. Um, the playlist recommendation comment, it was really good. I, I'll come back next week with a good playlist, but in the meantime, I'm going to trust your music tastes and let you kind of take control on that one. All right, so we're gonna start today on, on our hands and our knees. So you can start with those hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips, so you're in your tabletop position. And we're gonna start with a cat and cow, but before you start, really focus on the serratus anterior, which is right below your shoulder blade. And you're gonna pretend you're puffing that up with air. So really pressing out and with my hands, I like to pretend I'm like turning them outwards. They're not actually moving, but you can get a little extra press up. And then that same movement, you're pretending you're pulling that chest forward through your hands. You're not arching the back too much. You're really just pressing through the hands and then pressing back up into that serratus anterior and then back forward, opening up that chest. Um, you may know this already, but the whole body is connected. So really a lot of upper back tightness can really impact your lower back, your core, all of the stability muscles. So really good here to make sure that the upper back and shoulder joint are staying mobile. So finding that neutral spine, we're just going to start moving the hip side to side here. So getting a little bit of movement into the hip flexors, a little bit into the glutes. It feels good. You can always move all the way around into a circle. 
So circling those hips all the way around. If you find a spot that feels really good, you can stay there for a second. I have a really tight side, so sometimes it feels good to just stay in one spot for a second and feel a little bit of loosening. All right, and then you're gonna take that left leg out behind you and flex it, cross it over the top of that right foot, and then look back at that foot. So you're kind of, you'll feel a little bit of a pull in your glute, maybe in your oblique here, looking back towards that left leg. And if it feels good, you can start rocking a little bit forward and back on that back foot. Good. Slowly lift, bring that foot back up to the middle and back down. We'll switch to the other leg. Right leg goes out to the back, crossing it over the left, and you're turning to look. And you can come forward and back if that feels good. Good. We'll come back to center and down. So now we're going to flip onto your back so you're in a glute bridge. You're actually going to, instead of having the feet on the ground, you're going to bring them together. So kind of like you're in a butterfly position. And here you're going to find your neutral spine so that lower back is pressed down into the mat. You can put those hands on your hip bones if that feels good. And you're going to use the, the outer part of your foot to press those hips up into a low bridge, but you're in a butterfly kind of position. So you'll feel a lot of glute activation here. Those knees don't have to be all the way out. They can really be still pretty neutral. So maybe where they would be for a glute bridge anyway, your feet are just together. And you can start to add a couple pulses in. So lifting those hips up and down. If this doesn't feel good, you can always go back to a normal glute bridge. Good. Lifting up and down here for five, four, Three, two, one. You're gonna slowly lower all the way down. Plank those feet into a normal glute bridge here. Back is pressed down. Pretending you're kind of tilting those hips so that tailbone is pointing towards your feet and you can lift up here into a normal glute bridge. Before we start, making sure those feet are out of ways, you should not be able to touch them. So they should be a little bit away from under your knees. And you can, again, put some pressure on your thighs or on your hip bones if you want a little bit of feedback. You're gonna heel toe that left foot to the middle and lift up that right leg, taking that left hand and pressing it against that right leg. So you're building some tension. You'll immediately feel that left leg fire up. So pressing against here. So you can take that left hand off, you'll straighten out that right leg, and we're going to add in some abductor raises. So extending that leg out to the side and back into the middle. So we're really working on that glute stability here a little bit with that mobility of your hip flexor. Good. Three, two, one, bringing that leg back to a 90 degree angle, you're gonna add some calf raises in on that left leg. So again, getting into that fascia of that foot, just warming up everything, because it's all interconnected. You should feel some, some glue feelings here. <laughs> Three, two, one. You can lower that left leg down. We'll switch to that right first. You can put your right leg down, left foot up. That right hand is pressing against that left leg. Again, building that tension. One glute might feel a little sleepier than the other. My right foot definitely feels sleepy. So pressing against here with that right hand. You can take that right hand off, straighten out that left leg, extending out to the side, back to the middle. So here, this exercise is a perfect example of your oblique working in tandem with your glute. So your glute could not do this alone because it wouldn't have any place to stop. And your oblique couldn't do this by itself because it's not as strong as the glute. So this is really um, a perfect example of two muscles working together to do 
an abduction movement. All right, last one. Bring that leg back up to your 90 degree angle, coming to those calf raises, lifting up and down, warming up the feet a little bit. Got three, two, one. Nice, both feet down, lowering that lower back onto the ground. You can hug those knees in and roll around your sacrum, sacrum for a second. Can everyone hear me okay? We good? Okay, I'm gonna take that as a yes. All right, we're gonna go into a little bit of a core warm up. So you can start with those feet either at 90 degree angle or straightening up towards the ceiling, whatever feels best for you. Bringing those hands behind your head, elbows point up. You can take an inhale. On that exhale, you're gonna lift those shoulder blades up off the ground, pressing the head back into your hands, core is engaged. That lower back is pressed down into the mat. And exhale, good, inhale. Exhale and lift, the shoulder blades are lifting you up. If it feels better to have the knees 90, you can do that as well. Good, and lower. All right, we're gonna add on this time. Inhale, exhale, and lift. This time, you're gonna use those hips with the obliques here and to twist the hips side to side. So flexion and extension. So we're doing basically that, that lateral flexion movement here. So twisting side to side with those hips for three, Two, one, lower down, we'll do that again. Inhale, exhale, and lift up again, coming to that twist, so pivoting the hips back and forth. You should feel some engagement here. If you don't, you can always try to hold on one side and that will really fire up the core. Three, two, one, and now we'll do that one more time before we add on, inhale, Exhale and lift, last time here, twisting side to side with those hips. This is very, a very weird movement. Three, two, one. All right, we're doing one final round so that and then you can stay with that pivot or I'll give you an option to add on. So inhale, exhale and lift. So. Option one is to find that pivot. Option two is to stay on one side and twist. Back to the center, pivot to the other side and twist. Pivot to one side and twist and lift. Pivot to the other side, twist and lift. We'll do one more on each side if you're doing that. Back to the center and down. You can lower those feet. Hopefully that core feels fired up a little bit because we're gonna hop right into it. So um, we are going to start with the pyramid, which means we'll have intervals of time going up the pyramid and then back down. So two exercises. First exercise is going to be a bicycle crunch. So you'll have either of those feet on the ground. So you'll be here either doing opposite knee, opposite foot, or if it feels better to have those feet lifted, you can do your extension um, with the feet going back and forth. So bicycle crunch exercise one. Exercise two is a Russian twist. And you'll see that this is the epitome of what an anti-rotation exercise should look like. So you can have those feet lifted, you can have them on the ground. I like to put my hands together. You can have them like this, you can, whatever feels best. But you're gonna be twisting and finding that range of motion. So twisting to center, twisting to center. But you're really not trying to get into that lumbar spine. You're really not trying to work your low back. So you're finding where that core tells you to stop, back to center, twist me to the other side. Again, you can always lift those feet for an extra challenge. We're gonna start with 15 seconds of each, and then 30 seconds of each, and then a minute of each, and then back down. It's gonna be a lot. Um, so we're gonna start with 15 seconds of just those bicycle crunches. All right, starting in three, two, one. So finding, you can either have those feet on the ground at opposite foot, or you can extend those feet out. This is a short interval to start with just to get comfortable. Three, two, one. We're lifting up. We'll start that Russian twist. In three, two, 
One, so again, you can lift those feet if you want. You can have them on the ground. Trying to take that weight out of your low back by really working on relaxing the shoulder blades down your back. Three, two, one. All right, we're going into our 30 second interval. So back down onto the mat for 30 seconds of bicycle crunches in three, two, one. So really aiming to try to get that elbow up rather than your knee in. So lifting that shoulder blade up just like we did in the core warm up. Nice and controlled here. My pet peeve is when people in the gym just do these extra fasts. It's really not about speed. Nice and controlled. Good. Three, two, one. Nice coming up for those Russian twists. We'll start in three, two, one. So you can have those feet lifted or down up to you. So you should feel where your core is like, whoa, stop. Because there's going to be a time where you would be getting into that low back if you twist it any further and you don't want to get into that point. You may feel this a little bit in your quads too if you have your feet lifted. No exercise works, only that muscle. There's always a bunch of them working. Three, two, one. All right, we're at the top of our pyramid, one minute of each. So we're going back down onto our back, one minute of those bicycle crunches in three, two, one. So again, nice and slow, controlled here. Good, 45 seconds to go. Breathing. Nice, halfway. Maybe you want to try to slow it down a little bit for that second half. Good, 15 seconds left. Oh, it burns. Good, three, two, one. Oh, my core. All right, going into those Russian twists for a minute. Again, option feet on the ground, feet lifted. Three, two, one. One minute here. My big piece of advice is really try not to see curve the spine. Relax those shoulder blades down. Keeping that spine long. You don't want to be crunching in. Oh, it already burns. <laughs> Good, 30 seconds left. Last little push. You can always take a little break and come back to it if you need. Almost there, three, two, one. All right, we're going down the pyramid now, so 30 seconds of each. Back down into that bicycle crunch in three, two, one. So finding that bicycle crunch again. Extending that foot out, or again, you can always drop those feet down, opposite elbow, opposite knee. 10 seconds left. Three, two, one. Up into that Russian twist. And three, two, one. Almost done with these. These are two of the most effective um, exercises for the stability of those obliques. 
You may not realize it, but every time you turn your body at all in your activities of daily life, those obliques are helping you. So it's really good to make sure that they're strong. Three, two, one. All right, final interval, 15 seconds of each, and then we get a break from these exercises. Three, two, one. Final 15 here. Three, two, one. All right, final 15 seconds into that Russian twist. Oh, in three, two, one. Final 15 here. And we'll get a little water break. Three, two, one, relax. Nice job, everyone. Feel free to grab some water. Maybe take a couple little twists back and forth just to feel, to squeeze out the lumbar spine a little bit. And then we'll go into our second set of things. So um, our next interval set is going to be um, 45 seconds on, 15 seconds off. So um, a longer interval, a longer break. Um, and we'll be doing that two times through for four exercises. So our first exercise is going to be a side plank rotation. So I'm gonna move down my screen a little bit. You can do this on your hands or you can do this on your forearms. I'll show you both. Um, for both of these, you can do it on your knees or on your toes. So if you're on your toes, your side plank rotation, you'll rotate to the side, open up, Row to the other side, open up on your knees. You're just rotating to the side, opening up, rotate to the side, open up. If you're on your forearms, on your knees, or on your toes, I recommend stacking the arms and then opening up into that side plank like this, or you can do it on your knees, same thing, opening up like so. Um, second exercise is plank hip dips. Um, I recommend doing these on your forearms, but you can do them on your hands if that feels better. Uh, there's nothing ph physiologically wrong with doing them on your hands. I just think they're, they're um, less uncomfortable on your forearms. So moving the hip to the side, back to the center, hips to the side, back to the center. You're really not trying to touch that hip to the ground or anything. You're just trying again, similar to that Russian twist, to find that degree of rotation that feels good for your spine. Um, next up, we've done this one two weeks ago if you were here, um, but it's a side via. So you can come one leg up, so you're extending up towards that foot, or you can bring both legs together. Using this hand to stabilize you a little bit, you can always stand your forearms if you need to, no worries either way. And we'll do one side and then we'll go to the other side. All right, let's start with those side plank rotations. 45 seconds on, 15 seconds off in three, two, one. So really engaging those obliques here. And don't worry about looking up towards the ceiling. You kind of want to keep that gaze down the whole time so you're keeping that neck neutral. Never about speed here. In fact, the slower you can go, the more you're really going to get all those muscles to help you out and you won't have to compensate anything. Good. 15 seconds left.
So for me, my rotation is small because that's really what feels good. So listen to your body on this one. Good, 15 seconds left. Breathing here. Three, two, one. 15 seconds off. Going into those side V ups. So one hand is out, legs are out, extended. We'll start in three, two, one. So again, both legs, or you can always do one leg if that feels better. We'll stay on this side for the whole 45 seconds and then switch to the other side. Again, you can always try to hold at the top for a second. That's when I really feel some engagement. Good, 10 seconds left. Good, three, two, one, 15 seconds off, switching to that other side. I can't see you now. <laughs> All right, three, two, one. So you might find one side is easier than the other side. That's pretty normal. Slow up, slow back down. This is actually one of my favorite exercises. I really feel my core working extra hard. Stabilize me. 10 seconds left. Good, three, two, one, 15 seconds off. We're gonna go back to the beginning. So back into those side plank rotations one more time through and then we'll get a longer break. All right, we'll start in three, two, one. So we're back into those rotations. Maybe you wanna try it on your hands this time. Maybe you wanna try it on your forearms. Wherever you are, maybe you want to throw in a smile. <laughs> Give yourself some encouragement. 15 seconds left. Three, two, one. 15 seconds off. Going into our hip dips. Last time. Starting in three, two, one. Controlling the hips to each side and then finding that neutral spine in the middle. Keeping that neck long, relaxing those shoulders down. Making sure you're breathing in that plank. 15 seconds left. Good, three, two, one. All right, last time doing those side V-ups on each side and then we'll get a longer break. Starting in three, two, one. I recommend that you try this time, maybe slowing everything down, 
Maybe you want to try holding at the top slowly and then back down. Good, 15 seconds left. Good, three, two, one. Nice, last time switching to the other side. Starting in three, two, one. Got extending up and back down. Remember, you can always just do one leg at a time if that feels better. Fifteen seconds to go. Almost there. Three, two, one. Nice job, everyone. Feel free to grab some water and take a quick break. All right, so we're finding um, another pyramid, but two different exercises this time. So the first exercise will be a Spider-Man. You can do this on your, your hands or your forearms, depends how tapped out your wrists feel by now. Um, you can also do this on your knees or on your toes, so ton of options here. Um, basically, your goal is going to be to bring that knee as close to your elbow with good form as possible. So finding that good plank position, you can find it on your toes if you want. You're gonna be bringing that knee out to the side to your elbow and back in. Knee out to the side and back in, so on your knees, same thing, knee into elbow. On your forearms, same thing, knee into elbow. Does that make sense? So you'll be alternating back and forth. Um, that's the first exercise. Second one is going to be a side plank variety, and we'll switch back and forth with those. Um, so you can do pretty much any side plank. I'll demo a couple. So for example, you can find a side plank with a leg lift. Maybe you want to do pulses. You can do a side plank with um, threading the needle. You could just lift the top leg. You could do pulses. Um, the first, so going up the pyramid, we'll stay on one side and then going down the pyramid, we'll do the other side. All right, I think that's all you need to know. So we're gonna start with 15 seconds of our Spider-Man. So wherever you wanna start here, in three, two, one. So bringing that knee into the outside of your elbow. That core is staying firm. So basically you're crunching that knee in. So the oblique is having to control this movement. Three, two, one. So picking what side you want to start with for that side plank. You'll stay on this for the whole 15 seconds, starting in three, two, one. I'm choosing to start here, but really wherever you want to start for that side plank. Breathe in. Three, two, one. All right, back into those spider mans for 30 seconds. We'll start in three, two, one. I'm surprised no one has commented on my really embarrassing tan lines on my arms yet. <laughs> They're not great. Good, so really screwing the hands into the ground here, finding that stable base. Good, three, two, one. You're back into that side plank. 
starting in three, two, once you're on that same side as the first one, we'll switch when we go back down the pyramid. My one piece of advice for those side planks is to not try to look up towards the ceiling, really try to look down at the hand even, or keep the neck neutral. The pelvis is staying even here. Really trying to press that back glute forward a little bit. Three, two, one. We're going into one minute of those Spider-Mans. All right, starting in three, two, one. One minute of Spider-Mans is a lot, so feel free to take this on your knees if you need to. Even as you get tired, you may have to check in, come down to those knees, that's totally fine. Form is way more important. Or maybe you go down to your knees and you're feeling good again and you wanna hop back up to your feet. Whatever you're feeling, 30 seconds. Good, 15 seconds to go here. Nice. Three, two, one. All right, coming to that side plank. You'll be here for 30 seconds and then that halfway point, you'll switch to the other side. All right, starting in three, two, one. So whatever first side you were on and then halfway through we'll switch. So regardless where you are on that side plank, see if you can pull an imaginary string from the top of your hip so you can lift it up a little bit higher. My glute. All right, switching to the other side, right into that 30 seconds on the other side, because we're technically starting down our descent of our pyramid. Fifteen seconds. Good. Three, two, one. All right, 30 seconds. Back into that Spider-Man, 30 seconds, starting in three, two, one. Maybe you want to try this on your forearms this time. Switch it up, whatever you're feeling. As much as you can, see if you can avoid moving the middle section as you move your knee. So trying to keep the rest of the body pretty stable while that knee extends towards your elbow. Good, three, two, one. So you're back on that second side, this time for your side plank. Starting in three, two, one, 30 seconds. So remember all your options. You can thread the needle, you can pulse, you can lift that top leg, you can be on your toes or on your knees. Maybe you're even feeling overwhelmed <laughs> with all the options. <laughs> Good, three, two, one, nice. All right, final time doing each 15 seconds of those Supermans in three, two, one, 15 seconds. Making sure to breathe. Three, two, one, relax. All right, final 15 seconds in that side plank. And three, two, one, pulsing here. 
or whatever you're doing, thread the needle, left leg left. Three, two, one, relax. All right, feel free to grab some water, whatever you need. We have a one last quick set of things and then we'll end with some stretching. So whatever you need here, take a second and then you're gonna find yourself on your side. You can come down on your forearm or all the way with your hand down to the ground, but you'll be laying with those hips stacked wherever you are. So we're gonna be going through a couple of different um, abductor exercises, which is a great example of, again, when that oblique is connecting to your glute, um, it's gonna be spicy. All right, we'll start in 10 seconds. So those feet are stacked. You can bend that bottom knee if that feels better. If it ever feels like your hip is digging into the ground, feel free to put a blanket underneath it. All right, three, two, one. You're just gonna lift that leg up and down here. Ryan, <laughs> he's trying to play music. All right, lifting up and down. So again, we're not going for 40 or 90 degrees. Just about up to 45 degree angle and back down, flexing that toe in towards you. If you want a little extra too, you can point that top toe down towards your bottom one as much as you can. You'll feel fired up down that leg. All right, coming to the bottom for little pulses here. Just little pulses up and down. So you may feel a lot going on because these are often unappreciated muscles that abductor into your oblique. So this may be a little uncomfortable, but you gotta wake up the sleepy muscles there. All right, we're gonna be moving this foot about a foot to the front and lifting it up and down. You can use that hand to stabilize if you want, but lifting that foot up and down here. front and that's really where a lot of that core work is going to come in. If you run a lot, this is really, really good. All right, coming to those pulses in the front. So that foot is a couple inches in front, just coming to a couple pulses. Good, 10 seconds. All right, that foot comes to the back. So one foot behind, lifting that leg up and down. It's not really gonna be an actual foot behind or else you fall. So just a couple inches behind that bottom foot, lifting up and down. I find this one to be the most challenging for me. Lifting up and down here. All right, pulses in the back. So again, those hips, even though you're kind of having to push forward, the hips are still stacked as much as you can and you'll feel that core re-engage. 15 seconds and then we have a final 30 second exercise and we'll switch to the other side. I don't know if you can see my head. <laughs> All right, bringing those feet stacked, you're gonna lift both feet at the same time and back down. It's up to you if it's even a couple inches up. That's fine, lifting those feet together up and back down. Final 15 seconds. Controlling up and back down. Three, two, one, relax. You can bring that knee forward if that feels good and just start to <laughs> lightly punch just to get all of the blood moving here, the fascia moving out of the way. 
If it feels good, you can massage a little bit. Good, and then we'll switch to the other side. Final thing we're doing today, and then we'll get to our stretches. All right, those feet are stacked. We'll start in three, two, one. So lifting that foot up and down. That toe is flexed. Again, you can point that toe down if that feels good. That front hand can kind of just control to make sure those hips are staying even. Good. All right, coming to those pulses, so little pulses in the bottom. You all look good. Ooh, it, so one side may feel more intense than the other. Usually we have a dominant leg of some sort. All right, bringing that foot, a foot to the front, lifting up and down here. So this movement, the lifting of the leg, you may not think about it, but so many different hip and glute and core muscles are taking or working together to lift your leg right now. Pretty crazy to think about. All right, coming to those pulses in the front, just little pulses up and down. Got that final minute and a half left here. All right, taking that foot to the back, lifting up and down. Again, it doesn't have to actually be a foot behind, but just a couple inches behind that bottom foot. So if you feel a lot going on here, you definitely need to get these muscles going more often because mine are definitely not loose and I need to be loosening them up. And that doesn't necessarily mean flexibility. Sometimes that just means mobility. All right, coming to those pulses. I'm a big advocate of flexibility through strength rather than just static stretching. That's really not the most effective way to stretch. Good, 15 seconds. All right, we'll finish with that 30 seconds of our leg lifts. And three, two, one, those feet lift together and back down, feet are lifting and back down. So really recruiting all of those muscles to help you lift up. Final 10 seconds. Good, three, two, one. And you can do what you did on the other side. So bring that knee up with a couple punches, maybe massage a little bit if that feels good. Move that fascia around. Good, and then you can roll onto your stomach here. We got 10 minutes to stretch. All right, so bring those hands underneath your forehead. You can kick those feet up and just roll windshield wiper your feet back and forth. So releasing that lower back a little bit. Good, you can come up into a child's pose of so bringing those knees wide, toes together sitting the hips back, walking the hands forward. You want this to be more of an active child's pose. You can bring those hands facing up and then not actually touching the elbows to the ground. So you'll feel a pretty big upper back stretch here. 
really try to drag those hands back towards you. Then walk those hands over to the right side. Get a nice stretch in that left side body. Switching to the other side, walking those hands over to the other corner. Good, you can walk back up. You're gonna bring that right foot in front for a hurdler stretch. So those legs are kind of they look like you're jumping over a hurdler, which a hurdle, I guess that's where the name comes from. So you can see I have a ton of tightness. In an ideal scenario, my hips would be level here. So really trying to put some pressure down onto this hip. You'll feel, if this feels great, you can start to walk forward. Um, if this feels still intense, you can stay lifted and just try to press down with that back foot and get some levity in this hip. I'm a big advocate of trying, of touching your body a little bit to feel where the tightness is. Um, sometimes that's a really great way for me to find the points of tightness. So in positions like these, like, ooh, that feels really tight. It helps me kind of figure out where my tightness lies. Good, switching to the other side, bringing that other foot in front. Other foot behind, same thing. One side might feel a lot better. This is a way worse side for me. I don't wanna say worse, but this is my problematic side. So again, if this feels good, you can start to walk forward. I can't even demo it on this side. Oops. We all have things that can make exercising or um, movement difficult in some ways, but I'm a big fan of trying to work around that and not viewing it as necessarily a problem. Um, my little hippie hip has a lot of work to do, but we're gonna get there. Good, all right, you can come onto your knees here. So, still can't really see my face. All right, coming onto your knees. If this doesn't feel comfortable, you can always just sit down um, like this. You're gonna bring those arms up into a goal post and tucking those ribs in so you're engaging your core. And we're just gonna squeeze out the thoracic spine, which sounds weird, but um, just twisting a little bit here. So again, listening to those obliques, but really trying to keep those hips facing forward. You may feel a lot of tightness here. We often don't move in this plane very often. Making sure you're not splaying the ribs, they're still tucked in. And then we're gonna add on a little bit. So bring those palms together like they're locked together and then relax the shoulders down and then see how it feels to try um, twisting with the hands together. So with some tension pulling back. Good, last one. We're gonna find seated, one last little stretch and then we'll be done. You can place that right hand onto the ground, reaching that left arm over. So again, trying to get into that whole side here. It feels good, you can bring that arm and do a couple circles with it. You can always just keep it over if that feels better. Good, we'll switch to the other side, planting that hand, reaching the arm over. Again, you can always find those arm circles if that feels good. All right, final stretch, we'll just do a quick neck stretch. So extending that left hand and touching it to the ground, you're gonna bring their chin down to your shoulder. So feeling some stretch in the side of your neck. 
You may need to play around with it to see where you need the most. If it feels good for your hand to stay on the ground, you can keep it there. If you want to raise it up, you'll feel a little bit extra. Feeling some release down the back of your neck. Good. Use that hand to bring your head back up to neutral, and then we'll go to the other side. Hand is planted on the ground. Your chin is going the opposite direction. I almost forgot what side I was doing. And then finding there, if it feels good to raise that hand for a little bit extra, you can do that. I don't know about you, but I have a ton of neck stress in my life. All right, using that hand, pushing it back up to center. Just see what feels good here. Maybe you want to move that neck side to side. Maybe you want to come to some shoulder rolls. Maybe you want to elbow the walls by you, whatever you're feeling. All right, you have made it through pouring glutes. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming. I'm going to stop recording.